Hey guys, Hello Bella here, and in today I'm going to be reviewing this book called Your Head is a Houseboat, and this is a book on mental clarity. It's a book about feelings. It's a book about coping and digging inside yourself. This book is full of journal prompts. So in this video, I'm going to be reviewing it and I thought I'd have this hat on for fun, but as it turns out, it is very annoying to wear a hat. So I'm not going to do that anymore. The book is written by Campbell Walker and he is also a YouTuber. Kind of a funny story about this book because I was in a reading funk. I had gotten like four or five different books and I couldn't finish them and I hadn't even finished a book all of 2022 which is not very like me. So I went to the library in search of something new. I figured I would go and browse the shelves and I went over to my favorite shelf in our library which is the nonfiction new arrival shelf. So it's all the new nonfiction books that my library it has purchased and this was on it and so I just decided to grab it I flipped through a couple of the pages and as you can see it's a very colorful book it's very interesting so I thought maybe this will help me get out of my reading funk since it's such a cool and interesting book full of illustrations and it did exactly that but it also helped me with so many other things so I'm going to break down some of the things in this book that helped me so one of my coping skills has always been humor. Even when I was going through some of the worst periods of my life, it felt like I could always make a joke about it. I feel like this book does a really good job in disarming you because it makes jokes about all kinds of different things and it really helps you to let your guard down when you are dealing with talking about feelings because we all know how hard it is to talk about feelings especially for those of us who are used to shoving them down that's what I usually try to do with mine until they bubble up and then I realize I have to do something with them so I was really caught off guard by the first chapter of this book because the author just starts off the book by telling you that you're going to die and it's just kind of a funny reminder because we know that but we sometimes forget it and he also says that you're going to have to spend your entire life with one person and that one person is yourself so so that is kind of a crazy thing to think about that if you make the space inside your head a really bad place to be then it is going to be a very difficult time living with yourself for the rest of your life. It was also a good reminder for me that I need to start fine-tuning what I want for the rest of my life because this is something that is exclusively mine and my experience and it's something that I'm going to be the only one who's going to be responsible for it. So I thought you know what I need to dig deeper I need to see what I really want out of life. One of the first chapters is kind of about the frequency of our thoughts and how many thousands of thoughts we think per day and how it can become overwhelming to live with all of these thoughts. So he suggests a practice called mind dumping or brain dumping and this is where you just get a piece of paper or the notes app on your phone or your computer and you write out everything that's bothering you, everything that you're thinking about, your to-do list, your tasks. And if you watch this channel, that is something that I have recommended probably a couple of times already. But I think it's a good practice because a lot of the anxiety that we carry around is just things that kind of are unresolved and things that need to be done but can't always be done immediately. So writing those things down really does help and to kind of look at things that bother you and just write it down just sort of gets it out of your head and onto the page and I think that that's a really good practice for clearing away some of that anxiety. He also has a chapter on what he calls freeloaders which are basically the people in your life whose opinions and thoughts and beliefs you have internalized as your own whether they come from your teachers, your family, your friends. Basically they're all those people who live in your head rent free. The person who told you that you'd never be famous, the person who told you that your writing was no good. Those those people are the freeloaders that live in our brain and try to weigh us down. I do think it's important to note that some of the freeloaders are there from a very early age such as childhood and a lot of the freeloaders are not meaning to be negative or not they're not meaning to put you down or they're not meaning to shoot down your ideas. It's just that they're coming from their own limited perspective so it's impossible for them to think that your crazy outlandish dreams will work because they don't believe that it will even work for them. So they're going off of what little bit of information that they have and and they're not really, you know, they're not talking about you when they're saying it. They're talking about themselves. And that's something that I had to come to terms with about telling certain people in my life that I have this goal or this big dream because I would immediately get like negative feedback about my goal or dream or just kind of like even being told to make my dream smaller. And, you know, it's kind of like I... I have a stream for a reason. If I wanted my dream to be smaller, I would have made it smaller. Um, so, you know, kind of being careful and being mindful of whose opinions you take on and who you let to um, control your own influence over yourself and your own opinion of yourself. 
He does have some journal prompts at the end of pretty much every chapter that I felt were very helpful and they're kind of structured in a way that is like a free form kind of thinking. They're not specific questions. They're just kind of a line of questioning that you can begin to ask yourself. And as someone who has been journaling for, I guess about seven or eight, maybe nine years, I've gone through all the prompts that you could possibly think of. Having some new prompts to work with was actually really nice because, you know, after you ask yourself so many questions, they kind of get old after a while they ask those same kind of line of questioning so I did like the way that he characterized certain things in the book to go along with the metaphor it wasn't always super literal and that helped me also to kind of understand my feelings a little bit better and I'm not gonna lie this book gave me insight that I haven't gotten from um, a 300 page wordy self-help book I got all of this out of this little cartoon book because I mean sometimes when you see something it makes more sense. Like you see the illustrations and you see like these lines of thinking and you think this is something that actually, you know, I wasn't able to put it into words before, but now that I see that, I can actually understand it a little bit better. This is just one of the many things in the book that he drew. He called them the grumpy sock puppets. And you know, he has all of these different metaphors that are just really, really entertaining. So uh, this book, I think it would be great geared towards someone who is in their late twenties, maybe because to me, it seems like a book for someone who's lived a little bit of life but is now kind of struggling a little bit trying to figure out their path and figure out what they're working on and for me the person that I am in my late 20s is so far away from the person that I was when I was you know in my early 20s and when I was 18 19 20 and I just thought all these things about life that I really don't even think anymore and it's it's interesting to see how much you change over time just from you know that four or five year span where you're starting to become an adult and starting to come into your own life and understand things about yourself I feel like I'm such a different person now than I was then and I think it's important to continue examining things as as you get older because you know you you can look up one day and realize oh I'm living a life that I don't even really enjoy that much and that's kind of scary to think about but it may require that you do some tweaking or some you know remolding of things to get more in line with the life that you want to live as I was saying earlier he does have some chapters about how other people make us see the world but he also has chapters about um, cognitive biases, cognitive distortions, ways that we look at life because of how we were raised or how we were brought up or our income level or what we were exposed to. He even goes on to talk about like if you were involved in musical theater and you really loved it and you wanted to do Broadway plays and make a living doing that but you lived in like say a mining town you didn't have a lot of exposure to something that you wanted to do so you might have convinced yourself that it wasn't for you that it was only for other people and that would be sort of a bias or a distortion in your line of thinking I actually have another video on cognitive distortions I think that is such an important thing for us to know is that our brain tells us things that are just simply not true and it's up to us it's up to the rational part of us to figure out you know what what is true and what is not quite true so he does a good job of framing that as um, basically looking through a windshield and so there are different types of windshields there's your optimism windshield where you think oh everything's happy and good everything's great and then there's your pessimistic windshield and there's your um, privilege windshield and so there's lots of different ways to look at things so you know maybe when you're in a situation where you might have been a little bit judgmental walking in you might want to think okay what windshield am I looking out of right now am I looking out of this as you know maybe I'm I'm still inside I'm a scared kid I'm afraid of what might happen and I don't think this could work out so I'm just not going to try at all those are things that you know we do to protect ourselves which I mean I'm guilty of this for sure I've I've passed on a lot of things in life because I thought that's just not for me that's not for someone like me I don't deserve that I can't have that that's for other people so on and so forth so you know when you get older you realize that there's nobody out there that's going to be any different or better than me in in any miraculous way we're pretty much all living similar existences and you know to to let yourself sit out of something that you truly desire is just a disservice to yourself so I think looking at those biases and looking at those beliefs is really really important
The book actually helped me realize some of my important thoughts that I was kind of stuffing down and by framing things in a different way like the cartoon characters, it helps me realize that these places in my brain are not a bad place. It's just sort of, it's gotten out of hand in some areas. He has all these different characters that, you know, basically you have a part of yourself that wants to be safe. You have a part of yourself that wants to have fun. You have a part of yourself that wants human connection. And, you know, there's other parts of yourself that, you know, just think nothing's, nothing's worthwhile. Everything's pointless. So deciding which one of those people is talking at any given time is helpful in examining what you are thinking and what you are feeling because because ultimately we all have to stick with ourselves for the rest of our life. So, you know, if I understand, okay, this is the Bella that is just tired and angry and just wants to be alone, wants to be left alone, doesn't feel ambitious, just feels like everything's pointless. Well, maybe I can give her a day to just be herself. And, you know, maybe the next day I get up and I don't feel quite so bad. So looking at something like that through almost like the lens of a cartoon to me is a little bit easier than just saying like, oh, this is the shitty version of me. This is the shitty version of myself, you know? You don't want to be too negative on yourself. And that's the next chapter that he talks about is your inner child and your self-talk. And there's entire books written about self-talk and inner child. And that's just a almost like a therapy cliche, right? Like to talk about your inner child. But there is a part of us that is still a kid and will always be a kid. And so tapping into that and talking to that person is important. And one of the things he kind of mentioned was don't say something to yourself that you wouldn't say to your inner child. So, you know, for me, for instance, I'm very hard on myself. So I set a goal this year to go to the gym four days out of the week. And so, you know, for instance, if I didn't go, if I only went three days out of the four, I might be like, oh, you missed a day. You shouldn't have done that. You are a failure. You know, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. You're really just screwing this up. You wouldn't say that to a kid. You might say something more like, I understand that you missed a day, but I know that you were feeling kind of overwhelmed and I just want you to know that that's okay. Sometimes we just aren't up to it and that's okay. Maybe we needed a little downtime and you know, we'll get it next week. This analogy also works with would you say that to your best friend? Would you be happy if your best friend said that to you? You know, for instance, if my best friend tells me something and then I say, oh, well, that was a really bad job that you did. You should have did better than that. I would probably say, uh, it's okay that you kind of messed up. I could see how that would happen to me too if I did that or I did this or I was under a lot of pressure. Um, but, you know, I do think there's room for uh, you to correct this situation, but don't beat yourself up about it because it's really not that big of a deal. I think what this book taught me most of all is that as a single human being, I have tons of different motivations and tons of different insecurities. And they're always going to be there, but how I let them affect me is ultimately how I live my life. And I can't let uh, the insecure part of me stop me from doing things in life that I really want to do. This book helped me think more clearly about some things that I kind of have been struggling with lately, just mentally, some things that I felt like I was not living in line with what I wanted to be doing and sort of like I needed to uh, fix the path a little bit. Not that I had gone off path, but that I was just, you know how you go on a trail and you get off the trail for a few minutes and then you look back and you're like, oh, where's the trail? That's kind of how I felt the last couple of weeks. It's just, you know, almost like I was just getting caught up in things and sort of like a little, I don't know, just not quite doing what I wanted to be doing. This book really helped me out and I think it's definitely worth purchasing. I wish that this was mine. This is actually the library's copy, but I'm probably going to wind up giving this book to a couple different people because it was that helpful that I just feel like this could be on every therapist's shelf. This could be on anyone who loves to think about mental health and feelings and, and you know, coping strategies. This is definitely one of the best books that I will probably read all year. And I think that, you know, this author, he's got a really really great way of talking about things that puts it into perspective and I, I hope that he writes more books I hope that um, this is something that he does more of because he has a really unique writing style and I very much enjoyed it so if you want to check out the channel I think the channel is called Struthless and then if you want to check out his book you can always buy it on Amazon or find it somewhere online I highly recommend it thank you so much for watching the video guys I will catch you in the next one take care